Hi Shimmy Shakers, welcome to Belly Dancer Diaries and to today's videos which is a special question and answer video all about our shimmies and layers. So if you struggle with your shimmy or your layers, keep watching, I'm going to give you heaps of tips. So thanks so much everyone for sending in your questions for this video. I know the shimmy is a really fun move, but it's also quite a hard move to master. And a lot of you have had very specific issues with it. So hopefully by the end of this video, you are going to have your shimmies perfect. Okay, so first question comes from Cappy. And Cappy said, I like the shimmy, but it's too difficult for me. How can I make it easier? Okay, firstly, many moves in belly dancing are very, difficult but that's one of the great things about it because you're really connecting your body with your brain trying to learn something new so if you find it difficult don't worry the best way to start is to break it down nice and simply we start with our good posture remember we keep our feet hip width apart our pelvis is tucked in our chest is up our hands on the boardroom table and then we're bending one knee then the other one then the other so remember as you bend the knees you're keeping your upper body nice and tall. You're keeping everything from here down nice and relaxed. We're keeping our heels on the floor and then we speed it up going as fast as we can, getting everything here to wobble, getting everything here to wobble as well. Okay, the next question is from Sana and Max and Sana says, for the shimmies, is it only the knees that I use? This is a really good question. So in the shimmy that I teach, it's the classic authentic Egyptian shimmy where you do just use the knees. There are other shimmies that use different parts of the bodies. There's feet shimmy where you're coming up into your feet and using your feet and shift said. There's hip shimmy where you're coming up and down with your hips. There's even glute shimmy where you're squeezing one glute than the other. But for our authentic classical Egyptian shimmy, yes, it is just the knees. The key is to make sure everything is relaxed. If you're squeezing through here and here, your shimmy is not going to flow through your whole body. But if you're relaxed from here down, you can see my belly starts to wobble just a little bit as well. Sometimes my arms might wobble too, but it's all coming from the knees. The shimmy comes from the knees. Okay, next question is from Shweta as well. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your names incorrectly because I have them up on the screen, but I, I don't actually know how to say them. So apologies in advance if I'm not saying it properly. Um, Shweta would like to understand why her knees hurt when she's practicing her shimmies. Um, she finds she has to stop for a while and then start again. And also her butt hurts. How is that even possible? Okay, great question. Firstly, let's look at your knees and why you might be getting pain through your knees when you're shimming. Number one, remember your posture. I know some teachers teach your shimmy with your feet turned out but I find this is not good for your knees try and have your feet parallel hip width apart that way when you bring one knee forward then the other the knee is tracking over your foot if you have your feet out wide and then you're bringing your knee in this way you can see on the joint it is really uncomfortable because you're bringing it out of alignment with your ankle and with your foot whereas if you're having it this way you'll bring it in the same line as your ankle and your foot the other thing that might be causing you pain is the placement of your knee. So if you're someone who's really strong through here, but weak through here, or strong through here, but weak through here, then your kneecap might be out of place. So each time you bend your knee, you're rubbing on the back of your kneecap, which of course isn't good. So if that is the case for you, you'll probably feel it in other exercises as well. Even if you're walking a lot or you're cycling, you'll probably feel that knee rubbing. Um, and if that is you, you wanna be able to strengthen strengthen the opposite part that you need from what's strong now. So say for example, your leg here is really strong, your kneecap will be drawn over to this side. Therefore, you wanna strengthen this part. And if your kneecap is drawn more to this side, you wanna strengthen this part. So please see a physio if that is you, they will give you exercises that will help with your shimmy. Okay, the other thing is that Shweta said was her glutes. Glutes getting really, really stiff while doing your shimmy. The main thing our glutes are doing in our shimmy are stabilizing us. So you're using the muscles through here to keep you nice and steady. If you haven't got your glutes switched on, especially when you do your one-legged shimmies, you're just gonna fall all over to the side. So you can do a really nice stretch for this one if you happen to have a couch by. You can sit down, bring one leg up, you'll feel this through your glutes. And then to feel it more through the side of the glutes, just gently 
push down on your knee. I've got a whole video of hip stretch, so I'll link that below. You can do that one that will really help you too. Okay, next question. This is from Fire Kiss. CJ, um, could you do a tutorial about the thunder shimmy and the towel? Would be a great help. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you for asking for that question. What is our thunder shimmy? Our thunder shimmy is a way that we build up strength through our shimmies without actually doing our shimmy. So to start on our shimmy, I'll have our towel handy as well. I'll explain that in a sec. We bring our body down. We bring our legs straight out in front. We're keeping our heels on the floor as we bend one knee, then the other. So we wouldn't do this as a belly dancing move, but we're mimicking our belly dancing shimmy to build our strength, especially through our hip flexors so that we can be stronger in our shimmy. So with this one, really important, you want to keep your posture up nice and tall. You don't want to be slumped down this way. If you're finding it's far too much pressure on your upper legs, you can lean back until you build the strength to be able to sit up straight and then bend one knee, then the other. The other important thing with this one is to make sure you're lifting the knee all the way up. It's not just like a little lift, it's about that high up. So if you hold your hand about that high up before you start bending and then you wanna bend up to that leg without moving your heel. So you're not bringing your heels up and down, you're just bending one side, then the other, and then you speed it up. So if you haven't, done this one before, you might have been missing out on our 100 day dance challenge, our good morning 100 day dance challenge. So I'll link that below too, because we go through this exercise a lot and we build it up over time. It's a really, really good way to build your shimmy. If you are finding your knees are hurting when you are doing this or your knees are locking out, um, there's a way to fix that. So grab onto a towel and you want to fold or roll the towel up so that the towel makes the leg just a little bit higher. So you don't wanna bring your knee all the way up. Okay, so that's a little bit high there. Um, you just want it so it's not all the way bent, but just a little bit bent. Often when people do their shimmies, they lock out their knees. So they go all the way back and hyperextend behind. This is gonna help you to prevent from hyperextending. So bringing the towel under your knees, and then again, come into your shimmy, staying up nice and strong. And this towel's a bit long, but you can, depending on how big your towel is, roll it all the way up. Otherwise you can see that's a little bit too high for me now because I have to bend too much. You want it just about there. So you can see a little bit off the floor, meaning that I can't straighten my legs all the way out. I can't lock my legs back. So practice that or get into your muscle memory and it'll really help you to stop hyper extending your knees when you're shimmying. Then once you are standing up, coming into your shimmy, keep that same feeling. You don't want to lock all the way back. It's little relaxation at the end. So I'm coming from bend to straight, but not hyper straight. It's straight here rather than here. So I hope that helps you. Okay, next question. So Christina says, excellent teacher. Well, thanks, Christina. I'm struggling to do my shimmy while sitting. I look out like a fish, fish out of water. Okay, so she's talking about the thunder shimmies there. So we're again back down on the floor. A fish out of water, I'm imagining you're kind of like moving everything all around. That's what I'm imagining a fish out of water looking like. Um, so if that is you, remember, number one, keep your body up nice and tall. Number two, keep your heels on the floor because if you're rolling out, it's just not going to have the same impact. It's not going to work the same muscles. It's not going to help you shimmy in the same way. So instead, make sure your heels are in one spot. If you have a friend who can help you, maybe they could hold onto your feet while you do it. Like if they hold onto your ankles and then you can't, you can't move your ankle back and forth, you're just moving here. And then really focus on your core so you're sitting up nice and straight and then just let it go. I know often people as well, when they first start to learn the shimmy, they might look like a fish out of water when they first start. And again, it's all about isolation. So if that is you when you're standing up too, remember again, feet hip width apart, pelvis tucked in, chest up, nice and tall through here. Keep it in your knees. Don't worry about what your hips are doing. Nice and relaxed, just working it through your knees. And then even though everything else shakes from your knee shimmy. It's like a secondary movement just based from here. 
Okay, next question is from Helen and Helen says, I've been doing shimmies quite some time, but if I break down to one leg, my left knee movements are much bigger than my right and my left glute is always stronger than my right side. Any advice? Oh, this is such a good question because, you know, I think every single person I've taught the shimmy to and I've taught, well, hundreds or well, thousands, I guess, of people over the years, um, always one side is stronger than the other. So this is very normal. Um, don't feel like there's anything wrong with your body. It's extremely normal to have one side stronger than your other, but there are things that we can do to balance it out. So if you're doing shimmies on both legs and you're finding one side's a lot stronger, again, you can come down to the floor and do your thunder shimmy, but really work on your weaker side. So still work on the stronger side as well, but do a little bit longer on the weaker side. So say for example, this side is weaker. I can do just that side. You can see I'm just bending the leg on this side. I'm just keeping this one relaxed to build up that strength, build up my muscles in this side. Same for the glutes. You can give the glutes a nice little stretch on this side if they're stronger here. And you can strengthen them on the other side by keeping this going. Once you can do it one side for as long as the other side, then try and do both sides at once. And hopefully it should feel a little bit stronger for you when you are standing as well. This is one of the things where a lot of it is about practice. So yeah, put in the time to do it and you will get there, I promise. Okay, so all those questions were about our basic shimmies. We're now coming into some questions about our layered shimmies. I love the layered shimmies. It's one of my favorite moves because it is challenging. It really gets your brain working, but they look fantastic and they are so much fun. So first question is from Ellen and Ellen says, I have a question. <laughs> um, could you please explain a bit how to manage the shift in weight example from one leg to the other when you are doing your shimmy without breaking your shimmy in between. Maybe there are some specific exercises that could help. Thank you. Oh, thanks for your question, Ellen. Okay, so when we are walking in our shimmy, number one thing to remember is our shimmy is on the leg that is on the floor. So when we have both legs on the floor, we're shimming on both legs. I transfer my weight onto the foot that is not going to step. So the foot that's staying on the floor, I transfer my weight onto that side and keep the shimmy going with this. So if you're finding it hard to transfer your weight from one foot to another, start with both legs going, then slowly keeping your shimmy going, bringing the weight onto this leg. So as you can see, I'm just lifting up the other heel just to say that the weight's not on this foot and then try and smoothly change. When is the point that I change? If I'm changing from here to here, if you do it quickly, it doesn't really matter because even if you have a little gap, no one's gonna be off to notice because the movement's quick. But if you're doing it slowly, as soon as you have any weight on that second leg, that's when you wanna shimmy it. So let's just try it. Bringing our shimmy to both legs. Okay, let's keep it in this side and then slowly transfer our weight over. So I start it in this side first before I transfer my weight over or keep focusing my mind on this side first before I transfer over. Okay, let's come back to center and then other side. So just start doing it this way where you come back to center with both and then onto the other side, back to center with both and then onto the other side, good. Okay, let's try it now, lifting one leg off and then switching. So we don't have a center anymore, we go from one side to the other. So starting with both, transferring to this side, lifting the other leg up. You can still touch on the floor, but we're not going to have a break in between. And then as soon as I have any weight on this foot, comes into this foot. So this foot's up now, shimming on this side. As Soon as I have weight in this foot, I'm shimming on this foot. That's it. Let's try again. Transferring to the side, shimmy. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and transferring to the side, shimmy. Good work. Okay, if you find that the one-legged shimmy is difficult, you can also do the one-legged shimmy on that side by itself just to build up your strength. So again, you can do it on the floor with the thunder shimmy. Otherwise you can bring one leg out and just hold your shimmy on this side. Now remember with your posture with this one, your knee is still traveling over your foot. Our foot isn't more turned out than our knee. 
We want to still keep it nice and strong in line and then keep the shimmy going on that side. Once you feel like you can do the shimmy on one side, it's really going to help you, especially with all your traveling shimmies as well. So it's a really, really good one to practice. And again, one side will always feel easier than the other. So don't worry if you feel uneven between both shimmies. Okay, next question oh, is also by Ellen and she says, I can do everything ex separately except the one-legged shimmy. When she tries to do the one-legged shimmy, her legs lock possibly because she's putting too much weight on one leg. Okay, so if you are finding your legs locking, again, it might be because you're pushing all the way back. You never want to hyperextend your legs. So even if you... Think about going from bend to bend. So it's bend, 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 rather than bend straight, if that helps you, if you're over straightening. The other thing is that if you're feeling like you're too heavy in that leg is to really focus on your upper body posture. So try it now, see if you can feel the difference. Come onto one leg and shimmy and just relax the other leg. I'm not extending it or anything, just keeping it relaxed. And then lift up through your posture, through here up, and you can feel there's a lot less pressure on this leg. Now just slump into it. And this leg feels a lot heavier. It's gonna find, it's gonna make it harder for you to do the movement because you've got more weight on the leg and also your body's not aligned over it. So again, lift up. So lifting up through here, holding nice and strong. Imagine something's pulling you up from here. And then just relax. Can you feel the difference? Okay, let's always lift up. And when you're lifted up from here up, it should feel a lot easier to do it on one leg. So I hope that helps. Okay, the next two questions are kind of similar. Um, Faith says, uh, my issue is mainly with coordination, multitasking between hands and feet. I suppose I'll improve over time. And Emma says, I have got my shimmies all sorted, but it all goes to pot when I add a layer, any advice? This is such a good question. You know, with our layered shimmies, often it's not just the muscles that make it difficult for us, it is our brain. So if you are finding that you're concentrating on your shimmy and then you're trying to add a layer and then you're thinking about your layer and then your shimmy stops and then your layer stops and then it's too hard to put together, um, don't worry, you will get it with time and these tips are gonna help you get it. So first of all, if you are really wanting to get your layered shimmies, focus on your shimmy by itself first. You should be off to do your shimmy, your basic shimmy without thinking, that is the key. So how do you get there? First of all, just practice it, but then start doing it while you're doing something else. So I'm shimming now while I'm talking to you guys. So you might shimmy while having a conversation with anyone. And at start, you might get lost because you're thinking, oh, what do I say? And then because you're not thinking about your shimmy, your shimmy will stop. So don't worry if that happens, it's very, very normal. But then slowly see if you can do it while talking to someone, while maybe doing the dishes, <laughs> while you can try it brushing your teeth as long as you can still do it properly and breathe. <laughs> I had a friend who used to always do it while she was photocopying. She'd always shimmy when she was doing her photocopying. So if you can link like two activities together, any two activities that you do often, um, just think, oh, okay, whenever I wash the dishes, I'm always gonna shimmy. Whenever I photocopy, I'm always gonna shimmy. And all that incidental practice will really help you build it. It's not just about the practice, it's also about the practice of doing it while you are doing something else. The next thing that you can do is imagine yourself doing it because as I said, it's often the mind that makes it difficult for us rather than the movement. So if you, for example, want to do your shimmy with the chest up, you can watch videos of other people doing it. You can imagine yourself doing it and that's going to help. The other thing to do is to break the move down really slowly. So say for example, we want to do a hip circle and we wanna add a layered shimmy on top, we can break down the hip circle so our body gets used to the movement and it builds into our muscle memory. So for example, with our hip circle, we bring our hips forward in our hip circle to the side, back and side. So even though when we're doing a hip circle, we don't jolt it into these points, or they can if you want to, breaking it down into set points is gonna help you get it into your body. Start with your shimmy. Bring your hips forward, bring your hips to the side, bring your hips back, bring your hips to the other side, forward, side.
side, back, side. Don't worry if when you're first learning, you have to go forward and then stop, side and then stop, back, stop, side, stop. Same with your walking shimmy. It doesn't matter if you go walk, stop, step, stop. It's all about building up. And if you are able to keep the shimmy going and then get those points, even if you stop in between, you'll have it almost. And once you have one layered shimmy, I find nearly all your other layered shimmies come. Okay, we've only got two more questions. These ones are about uh, sh layered shimmy walks. Um, first one's from Jacqueline and she says, hi Elisa, I'm enjoying learning the shimmy. With the walking shimmy, is it always the back leg that shimmies? This is such a good question. Really, really important if you're trying to work on your walking shimmies. When you are doing your walking shimmy, it is always the foot that is on the floor that is shimming. So for example, if my weight is here on the back leg, then my back leg shimming. As I transfer to the front leg, my front leg starts to shimmy. And then as I transfer forward, that leg starts to shimmy. The reason why is because imagine if you're just shimming the leg that's off the floor, it kind of looks, it looks really funny, doesn't it? If you're doing this like little kick with your foot, we really need something to anchor our foot when we are shimming. So whichever foot's on the floor, that is the one shimming. So if we're going from here, coming down, nice strong shimmy, coming down, nice strong shimmy. In your walks, as you go in between the step, if both feet are on the floor, you can shimmy with both legs if you want to. So step, and again, as Ellen asked before about the transfer of weight, you can practice this nice and slow. If you find that you lose it in between the step, that's fine. You, even if you stop here, change, shimmy, stop, change, shimmy, that's fine. But then over time, start to build it up. And that's the same for when you're on your toes as well, even when you're up on demi point. I think when I'm on demi point, I spend a little bit longer on both feet just to help me balance, but it's still the leg that's on the floor that does the shimmy. Okay, final question. Um, the twist, drop and shimmy looks a bit like a hagala. Uh, yes. So this is referring to this step, I think, which is such a nice one. And it does look a little bit like a hagala, but yes, it is different. So if you haven't learned your hagala walk, the accents in it go down, out, up on the other side, down, out, up, down, out, up, and then you can speed it up. So it does look a bit like a shimmy walk. In a shimmy walk though, we're still using our knees. So remember again, keep it nice and strong in your knees, walking forward, even if you're adding a little drop, even if you're adding a little twist, it's still coming from the knees rather than the hagala, which is flick out, flick out, flick out, flick out, flick out in a set rhythm. Oh, there you go. I hope that answers all your questions. If you have any more, please write them below. And also if you have any tips about any of the questions that people ask, please write them below as well. I really love shimmies. If you haven't noticed, it's such a fun move and it's a really nice one to get perfect. As well as that, once you have one layer shimmy, as I said, you'll have a whole suite of other moves and they're really, really fun to do. And you can do them with lots of different types of music as well. So invest the time in learning how to do it properly, practice, be patient with yourself and most of all, happy dancing.